Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Exam Study. We're on video number 47. We're almost to the end of this, and I thought there for a minute that we were going to be near the end already, but holy cow, there's some more of this going on. So we're talking about, talking about transmission lines, and I have a couple of examples here. Not too many. Uh, I just had to memorize some of this stuff. Now, velocity factor of a transmission line is the velocity of a wave in the transmission line divided by the velocity of light in a vacuum. So that is just a comparison between how fast it goes, how fast that uh, wave goes through the transmission line versus it going through vacuum. Now, if you wanted to look up a cool experiment, go look up what the velocity factor of light is in diamond. Light only travels at 125,000 meters per second in diamond, whereas it's 300, no, 125 million meters per second. Through a vacuum, it's three, almost 300 million meters per second, or 300e to the 6. So, our transmission line, most of it is going to have some kind of velocity factor that is between 60 and 90 percent of that of the regular speed of our transmissions, the electromagnetic waves. Which of the following has the biggest effect on velocity factor of a transmission line? And that is going to be the insulating dielectric material. So whatever your coax is made of is going to affect that velocity factor. So you can see right here, polyethylene is about 0.66. Foam polyethylene is a lot higher at 0.88 to 0.79, somewhere in there. You've got air spaced a little bit lower. Foam polystyrene way up there 0 0.910 so the waves are able to propagate faster through through that particular medium and um air spaced ptfe that is about 0.85 to 0.90 and what is not shown here is ladder line which is basically just air space the constant dielectric of air is one so the velocity factor just happens to be really close to one with ladder line. And you'll see why that's important in just a moment. What is the electrical length of a coaxial cable longer than its physical length? Did I say why? Why is the electrical length of coax cable longer than its physical length? That is because electromagnetic waves move more slowly in coax cable than in air. So their electrical length is going to be longer than the physical length because of the time that it takes for that wave to travel compared to how fast it would travel in a vacuum. So remember that. They travel more slowly. That's why the electrical length is longer than its physical length. What impedance does a half wavelength transmission line present to an RF generator when the line is shorted at the far end? So a half wavelength transmission line short is a very low impedance. So the best way that I remember this when I took my exam years ago, half wavelength is short. So short is small, very low impedance. Best I can offer for that one. And there'll be another one in There's actually four questions like that on this test. They're a quarter wavelength and half wavelength. What is microstrip? Microstrip is a preci precision printed circuit conductor above a ground plane that provides constant impedance in interconnects at microwave frequencies. I mean, I struggle just reading that. But here's what a microstrip antenna looks like. It is on a printed circuit board, and they're used for very high, extremely high frequencies. So they can be small. I mean, you could make a microstrip antenna for 80 meters, but it's going to be huge. 
there is a mathematical formula that you can use to figure that out and it has to do with the size of the port itself and the feed point and the microstrip patch itself. So if you were to make one for Wi-Fi, it's it's somewhere around a, an inch by an inch square. Um, I'm I made I made one of these one time just to test out. Uh, they're they're also directional, which is pretty neat. Uh, let's go to the next one. It's question six. What is the approximate physical length of an air insulated parallel conductor transmission line that is electrically a half wavelength long at 14.1 megahertz? Now. Reading that question by itself sounds awfully intimidating, but if we break this down into sections, it's a little bit easier. First, figure out what is the physical length of a half wavelength transmission line at 14.1 megahertz. You take 300, that would be 300 E6, divided by 14.1 E6 because megahertz in scientific notation for us electronics engineers folks is times 10 to the 6. That's millions. That's 300 million meters per second. So they cancel out and that leaves you with 21.3 meters approximate length of a full wavelength now we're a half wavelength, so we're going to divide by two, and that gives us 10.65 meters. That's the first part. Now let's break down the top part. Air insulated parallel conductor transmission line, a.k.a. ladder line. Now the velocity factor of ladder line is so close to one that we're just going to call it one. There's nothing that you have to do to the math problem to figure out the physical length. So that's just the physical length. It's the physical length. There you go. Boom. Got it. Okay. So we will transition back and move on to the next question. Well, the next question says, how does parallel conductor transmission line compared to coaxial cable with a plastic dielectric? Well, it has lower loss. So strangely, if you go look up the losses between plastic dielectric and the loss in ladder line, ladder line, parallel conductor, has a lot lower loss. And you can just look those up in the data sheets for 450 ohm ladder line and then go look up your uh, plastic dielectric and you'll see, you'll see it. You can compare the numbers. Which of the following is a significant difference between foam dielectric coaxial cable and solid dielectric coaxial cable, assuming all other parameters are the same? All these choices are correct. That's what we're going to do for this one. Foam dielectric coax cable has lower safe maximum operating vo voltage. Foam dielectric coaxial cable has lower loss per unit of length. And you can look these up and compare them on data sheets for these. And then foam dielectric coax cable has a higher velocity factor. Now you could... Look this up on here. So foam is 0.88 max. Solid is 0.695. See, here's another foam right here is even higher, 0.91. So you can compare just that one on the dielectric itself. So all these choices are correct. What imp here's here's another one of those. I can't explain these very well. I will explain some of them in just a minute. What impedance does a quarter wavelength transmission line present to an RF generator when the line is shorted at the far end? Now the quarter wavelength is the opposite of half wavelength. 
If it's shorted at the far end, it has a very high impedance. Now, these next two, I have a mnemonic way for you to remember these. So I'm going to bring up the last picture that I've drawn for you. Question 10 says, what impedance does a 1 8 wavelength transmission line present to an RF generator when the line is shorted at the far end? Well, if it's shorted at the far end, for this particular question, it is like an inductor. It's a, it, it's a solid wire all the way around once you short it at the other end. So I drew a really rough inductor because it's sort of like an inductor. But question 11 says, what impedance does a 1 8 wavelength transmission line present to an RF generator when the line is open at the far end? That is a capacitive reactance. You can see that what all a capacitor is is parallel plates separated by a dielectric. In this case, it's a solid dielectric or a dielectric of some sort, whether it be foam or air or whatever. So you can think of it as a capacitor, so that would exhibit capacitive reactance. I hope that helps you with those two questions. And again, here we go. What impedance does a quarter wavelength transmission line present to an RF generator when the line is open at the far end? And that says a very low impedance. So you got four questions on here. Remember, you're only going to get one question out of this whole nine Foxtrot section. I've given a couple of them to you are pretty easy to remember. These are not so much easy to remember. So a quarter wavelength when it's open, low impedance. Half wavelength when it's open is a high impedance. And that has to do with, I think that has to do with constructive and destructive wavelengths in that particular medium and how they add and subtract and feed point impedance. I, I tried to Google it. And the explanations were too far in depth for what I could explain. I apologize ahead of time. Okay, so we've reached the end of those 12 questions. You will have to memorize some of those. Hey, I'm Robbie W1RCP. We're near the end of all 50 videos. So we're going to get there. There's three left. The last one's pretty easy. Safety. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. But we still have Smith charts coming up. Oh, no. Alrighty. So I wish you the best. Good luck on your studies. Study hard. Study often. Take practice tests. Learn from your mistakes. It can be done. It can be done. 73.